The next starship to fly has been selected as new details emerge concerning HLS's crewed interior. Starlink Gen 2 heads back to space and Dragon is on standby to take the next private crew to the ISS. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. Massey's gun range saw some action this week. On Monday, what is believed to be a test of a new deck core configuration was detonated on the B6.1 test tank. We covered two episodes back how Elon said there was way too much of a delay between execution and self-destruction of Starship 24-7 during the recent test flight. Ship 25, that you see right there next to it, has also undergone cryo tests lately, but she has since been chosen as SpaceX's next victim at Starbase. Making her way to the launch facility on Wednesday night for an upcoming static fire of its six Raptor engines, she was lifted and plopped down on a test stand B the following day. But speaking of Raptors, Elon announced Raptor version 3 has just reached 350 bar chamber pressure. The current version, version 2, operates routinely at 300 bar. V3 is not only a more powerful design, but it's even sleeker than the current version, of which the company currently has over 200 waiting for their time to shine. So with all that being said, keep working on fortifying that launch pad, boys. It's gonna need it. Segments of the steel splash pad on steroids, again mentioned two episodes back, are on site being prepped for installation. SpaceX has filed an application for special temporary authority with the Federal Communications Commission to launch Ship 25 and Booster 9 as early as June 15th, but there's still plenty of work to do, so don't be making plans to go down there just yet. NASA has been in communication with SpaceX since the test flight. Both entities have stated that a ton of useful data has been acquired because of it and both are extremely optimistic about the future concerning HLS for Artemis. NASA recently said that they're still trying to figure out how many tankers exactly will be required for orbital refueling, but work is being done behind the scenes at Hawthorne for life support and crewed compartments. Here is SpaceX's own Nick Cummings speaking more on that during this week's Humans to Mars Summit. So to give you a sense of scale, I was just in our uh, crew cabin, our, the Starship uh, Lunar Lander crew cabin, mock-up uh, in California, uh, I think it was last week. And the crew deck of the Starship Lunar Lander is about twice the size of this stage. Um, and there are room, there's room in Starship for multiple crew decks. We only really need one for the, the, the Artemis 3 mission. Um, below that crew deck, there are two airlocks um, that are each about the, the pressurized volume of a Dragon capsule. And then those airlocks are inside a very large garage, which is again about the size of double the size of the stage. Elon was interviewed by CNBC on Tuesday and elaborated that now that he's handing all the gains for free speech he accomplished at Twitter over to the WEF, he'll have more time to focus on Starship. Uh, well, I, I'm gonna be devoting a lot more time to, to Tesla. And, and then there's, and, and I'll also be allocating some more time to uh, getting Starship to orbit. In, in the case of SpaceX, um, as the Starlink uh, constellation uh, started working, I was able to move some of the, the best people from the Starlink program to the Starship program. You know, Gwen Shotwell, who's, who's right. amazing, yeah. um, uh, you know, operates the company and I, and I, I work on the, the sort of advanced technology. Kathy Luters, former human space flight lead for NASA until retiring a few weeks ago, has followed in the footsteps of her predecessor, Bill Gerstenmaier, and joined SpaceX's team. She will be a general manager operating out of Starbase directly under Shotwell. Moving on to Starlink news meow. In the wee hours of Sunday morning last weekend, Falcon 9 hoisted a flock of 56 Starlink pigeons to low Earth orbit from Slick 40, Florida, utilizing a booster for its 11th flight to make it so and successfully landing it on just read the instructions floating on the Atlantic Ocean. Then just last night, Thursday night, SpaceX launched 22 second gen Starlink satellites to orbit from the same pad for this booster's fifth time and set it down gently on a shortfall of gravitas. The company announced this week that more than 150 cruise ships around the world are set to use Starlink, including the ship the lawyer wife and I are cruising to Alaska on this summer. This morning, the launch of payloads for Iridium and OneWeb was aborted at T minus 55 seconds at Vandenberg. Launch abort has started. A reason has not been given at the time of this recording, but they have another opportunity on Saturday morning. And Axe 2, Axiom Space's second commercial mission to the space station, is on deck with a tiny launch window for Sunday. And just as I was about to upload this video, we have breaking space news to add. So here's today's surprise honorable mention.
Just minutes ago, NASA announced the agency has selected Blue Origin to develop the human landing system for Artemis V. A next step to Appendix P sustaining lunar development contract was awarded to the company, as well as its project partners, Lockheed Martin, Draper, Boeing, Astrobotic, and Honeybee Robotics. Under this $3.4 billion contract, their Blue Moon Lander will be designed, developed, tested, and verified so that a precision landing can be conducted anywhere on the moon's surface to meet NASA's HLS requirements for recurring astronaut expeditions. And as an American taxpayer, allow me just to say, you're welcome. Well, that's all for this one. Thank you for stopping by. And thank you, eccentric members, for membering. Your support is greatly appreciated. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. <laughs> Thank you.